Today, I'm gonna to show you four methods for adding life to your Unreal Engine projects. Welcome to Virtual Production Insider. I'm your host, David Stapp. And this video is for anybody who's creating 3D environments inside of Unreal Engine to be used in things like game cinematics or as you might have guessed, virtual production, especially when you're shooting on an LED wall. So we've got this construction environment that we're actually gonna be using on an upcoming shoot. We've got our MetaHuman posed in the scene right here, and this is kind of like how we can pre-visualize our shot before we show up on set. So the MetaHuman is a stand-in for our actual talent. Everything behind him is what is going to be projected on the LED wall. And looking at it right now, you can see that it's just very lifeless. It feels like a 2D plate. So let's get into adding life to our scene. The first thing you can add are environment effects. What example of this would be animated weather conditions. Uh, for this, I highly recommend the Ultra Dynamic Sky plugin. It is one of the best weather systems out there for Unreal Engine. It gives you a ton of customization. I could not recommend it more. This allows you to add things like animated clouds, fog, and even rain and snow. Another example would be atmospheric elements like steam, exhaust, or dust blowing in the wind. You can use the Niagara particle system in Unreal Engine to add these kinds of elements. And there are a ton of great Niagara presets that you can find on places like the Unreal Engine Marketplace to get you started. And one final example of this would be dynamic lighting. Think of things like a concert with moving colored lights all over the scene, or a faulty bulb that's actually making the light flicker. Think of the lights in your scene as practical lights like you would use on set, and think of how you can add some animation or add some variation to them. For this construction scene, we're going to add exhaust coming out of a construction vehicle that's driving by the scene, which ties in perfectly to our second method, which is adding animation animated props. Animated props can be anything from trees and grass blowing in the wind to everyday objects like flags, ceiling fans, or even cars driving by in the background. Get creative with this one because this will be heavily dictated by the environment you are building. So for our construction scene, we're going to add a bulldozer driving by in the background. For this, I just used an asset from the marketplace and animated it by piloting the rigged vehicle and capturing the animation using the take recorder. This allows me to play the animation through the sequencer inside Unreal Engine. If you would like a full tutorial on how to create animated assets using the take recorder, let me know in the comments down below. The next method is adding animated people, also known as digital doubles or the more common term, digi doubles. Now this is one method where you need to be careful in what assets you're bringing in because in virtual production, optimization is the name of the game. O-P-T-I-mization. Because when you start working with assets like metahumans and other characters that are really high poly, have really high quality textures, they're gonna be bogging down your system just for an asset that's gonna be far in the background and out of focus. So my recommendation is to deprecate your characters as much as possible to give you the best performance. Now you can use characters like metahumans or ones from a site like ActorCore, and you can find animations for these characters from sites like Mixamo, ActorCore, or the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Once you've got all of this imported, we can either assign the animation to the character or use Sequencer to give us more control over the timing of the animation. Again, if you'd like a full tutorial on working with things like digi-doubles and retargeting animations inside Unreal Engine, let me know in the comments below. And my last method is adding media plates. The most common example of this is adding in something like a TV in the background that is actually displaying content. This can also apply to things like computer screens or animated signs on buildings. Unreal Engine 5 has actually made it much easier to import video files that can then be displayed as a media texture. So after using most of these methods on our construction site, we've gone from this to this. Again, the biggest thing to keep in mind when adding these elements is optimization. So if you are using these methods for an ICV effect shoot on an LED wall or a green screen, be sure to test early and test often. So as soon as you can, get that scene booted up and see where your frame rate is hitting. This will help you know if you need to optimize it further and it will help you benchmark your performance well before the shoot. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing because we've got a lot more content like this video in the pipeline that we are really excited about. Again, my name is David Stamp. This is Virtual Production Insider, and we'll see you next time.